Welcome to the OM School program. This video is taken from our teacher training program on edX.org called Teaching with Physical Computing. Whether you're new to teaching computing or a specialist, this program will set you up on a path to becoming an expert in delivering technology-enabled project-based learning in the classroom. This module introduces the concepts associated with physical computing, including those of input, process output, the teaching and learning theories, teaching approaches, and strategies associated with physical computing. Physical computing in the classroom introduces the learners to interactive systems that can sense and respond to the world around them. The aim is to give learners a better understanding of how the technology in their lives is controlled. The systems usually involve an element of computer programming, and this gives an insight into the decision-making processes and the design of controlled technology. When placed in context, key terms that are explored within the teaching of physical computing are design of computer programs in order to control the way interactive systems sense and respond. Take, for example, a light-controlled pedestrian crossing. How long does a pedestrian have to wait after pressing the button before the traffic is stopped? How long do the lights stay green for the pedestrian before letting the traffic flow again? These are not simple questions to answer. There are technical issues to consider, and there are moral and ethical implications. Why make the pedestrian wait a long time, perhaps in the rain, while the drivers are in the dry? Why keep someone waiting when there is no traffic? It tempts them to cross the road anyway. In which case, the system is causing them to take risky action. And once the pedestrian has reached the other side without waiting, the light turns red for the traffic. Now drivers are frustrated because they are waiting at pedestrian lights, even though there are no pedestrians. Shouldn't all pedestrian lights change immediately when a pedestrian presses the button? The social, ethical, and moral implications of the learner's coding should be discussed. Check out the different light control pedestrian crossings in the highway code. They are all programmed differently. The physical devices that can be attached to a computer for this work, for instance, microbit or standalone programmable processors such as Raspberry Pi, are varied and numerous. Identifying the technology you have available will be an important step to deciding on the classroom activities and teaching strategies you can employ. Each device will have its own mechanism for programming it. Many can be programmed through Scratch and Python. Some use their own dedicated control interface. The means by which a device is programmed also determines the nature of the classroom activities. The opportunities and limitations of your kit depend on the number and variety of sensors and actuators that you have available. These might include humidity, infrared or IR, light-dependent resistors, LDRs, magnetic switches, passive infrared or PIR sensors, sound sensors and switches. The outputs you might have include buzzers, traffic lights, light-emitting diodes or LEDs, matrix, motors, such as stepper motors, and speakers. Physical computing and the associated classroom activities are thoroughly embedded in constructionism. Seymour Papert reflected, the child programs the computer and, in doing so, both acquires a sense of mastery over a piece of the most modern and powerful technology and establishes an intimate contact with some of the deepest ideas from science, from mathematics, and from the art of intellectual model building. This idea lies at the heart of physical computing. And at the heart of constructionism is the orthodoxy of constructivism. Constructionism has its roots firmly in the constructivist idea that learning is a construction of ideas in the brain, but with strong elements of a socially constructed understanding established through explanation, justification, and communication. In Seymour Papert's own words, constructionism, the N-word as opposed to the B-word, shares constructivism's connotation of learning as building knowledge structures, irrespective of the circumstances of the learning. It then adds the idea that this happens especially felicitously, in a context where the learner is consciously engaged in constructing a public entity. The activity of physically manipulating devices develops active engagement in the learning process. It also supports Seymour Papert's ideas of constructing knowledge through constructing things. Within the thinking of constructionism are also the concepts of, and the opportunities for, student-centered learning, discovery learning, and importantly, situated learning. Student-centered learning is also called hudagogy. The learning is self-determined, learner-centered, and founded on the key principle of learner agency, self-efficacy, capability, metacognition, knowing how to learn, and reflection. Discovery learning is learning by exploring environments and artifacts both physically and virtually. Learning is constructed both internally and socially, and in a way that is transferable to other contexts. 
Learning is motivated by engagement and self-determination at the point of action. Situated learning involves gaining skills and understanding in a real-life context and includes community of practice ideas promoted by Jean Lab and Etienne Wenger. Physical computing applies problem solving to real-world problems. The key learning values arising from physical computing include investigating, designing, modeling, and creativity. Because of the social elements of working together, physical computing develops learners' cooperation and collaboration skills. Communicating with each other and with others outside their group develops their communication and presentation skills. Also, the opportunities presented by physical computing and the programming aspect ensures that the activities of computational thinking can be developed. The learners are reflecting, coding, designing, analyzing, and applying. And a final word from Seymour Papert. The role of the teacher is to create the conditions for invention, rather than to provide ready-made knowledge. In memoriam, Seymour Papert, 1928 to 2016. To learn more, head over to edX.org and search for project-based learning and enroll for free.